It's been a topic of conversation in recent years. Several high-profile sports teams changing their name and mascot over racist origins. And tonight, all eyes and ears are on a post-game fight song at one of the largest college campuses in the country. Hundreds of alumni at the University of Texas, Austin, are threatening to rescind their large donations if that tradition falls silent. News Nation's Marky Martin joins us live with the battle over the fight song. Marky. Yeah, Marnie, the University of Texas at Austin really coming under fire here in recent months for this historic fight song. Many calling for its complete eradication due to its racist roots. The school, however, last fall said this song is here to stay. We're keeping it intact. Well, new this week, a new wave of emails has surfaced from wealthy donors threatening to stop the funding, pull the plug on their funding if the song gets canceled. It's called the Eyes of Texas, and its lyrics can be heard far and wide at the University of Texas. From home games and graduation to alumni events, the tradition of singing the school spirit song dates back to 1903. Tradition's really important, and I think that although there is controversy about you know how the song started and what it was used for before, I think that it's developed into something more than that. The song is sung to the tune of I've Been Working on the Railroad, and its title is a play on a phrase by Confederate Army Commander Robert E. Lee. In the school's past, it was performed at minstrel shows by white students in blackface. Condemnation of the practice now gaining traction. I don't think it should be played. I feel like the university should be listening to their students, and if a lot of students are saying, like, this history is negatively impacting us now, then they should listen to that. Origins of the song were brought to the forefront last summer following the death of George Floyd amidst civil unrest, student athletes calling for its replacement. My sophomore year through my senior year, I knew the meaning of the song that I never sung it after the game. Charles Omenahu is a former UT Longhorn. He's now a defensive end for the Houston Texans. He advocates for eradicating the song entirely, recalling how it made him feel on the field. Those things were just very gut wrenching very disturbing kind of thing that that's what the university stands on. Despite friction, the university's president announcing in July of 2020 that the school would be keeping the song as a treasured tradition, but would work to own its history and redefine what it stands for. In a press release, the school saying, quote, embracing the song's meaning today should not stop us from seeing its complicated past and acknowledging the many ways that people see the song. This week, new emails surfacing, obtained by the Texas Tribune, showing a wave of wealthy donors who threatened to stop donations if the university dropped the school song. In one email, retired administrative law judge Stephen Arnold writes this, UT needs rich donors who love the eyes of Texas more than they need one crop of irresponsible and uninformed students or faculty who don't do what they are paid to do. In another, an anonymous sender said, quote, My wife and I have given an endowment in excess of $1 million to athletics. This could very easily be rescinded if things don't drastically change around here. Has everyone become oblivious of who supports athletics? According to the Tribune, of the nearly 300 people who emailed the school last semester regarding the song, more than 70% demanded it be played. About 75 senders threatened to put an end to their financial support. Those emails were racist. A lot of those emails were, were racist. We spoke with Jade Fabello, a freelance writer who graduated from UT Austin last May. He says the song keeps him from having alumni pride, and he leans toward discontinuing it. His message for the school and the wealthy donors? I think you can kind of pick the donors or pick ensuring that your black students feel somewhat protected by the institution or are cared for. Now, Fabello also told me in our conversation today that he and the black community have long known about the song's origins before it really came to the surface last semester. Also expected to be released later on this month is the song's chronology. Last semester, the president putting together a committee uh, to document the song's history and also to offer recommendations for educating the community. So, of course, once that is released, it is expected to kind of reignite the conversation on campus. And just so you know, currently there are more than half a million 
UT Austin alumni across the country and across the world. Reporting live in Dallas tonight, Marky Martin, News Nation.